Look at Alexa. Alexa, oh my god, Alexa's got Lacey right here in front of us again. And a sister Abigail to Lacey Evans. Stealing another wrestler's finisher can either be disrespectful or a heartfelt tribute. Rollins, and there's Edge. Look at this, glam slam by Edge. Either way, it's always cool seeing an iconic finisher used by someone else, which happened early in 2021. The year started off strong with the return of Goldberg. The master of the jackhammer immediately went after the WWE champion, Drew McIntyre. The two exchanged heated words and ultimately agreed to fight each other at the Royal Rumble. Before the match even started, Drew McIntyre took a page out of his opponent's playbook and hit Goldberg with a spear. Don't worry, Goldberg made up for it by hitting McIntyre with several spears of his own. Despite that, it wasn't enough to keep Drew down and the Scottish Warrior beat Goldberg and retained the WWE Championship. Shortly after WrestleMania 37, Matt Riddle suggested he and Randy Orton form a tag team. Orton was skeptical at first, but eventually warmed up to the idea. Now that he had a new tag team partner, Matt Riddle decided to pay tribute to the Apex Predator. Riddle was wrestling a match against Xavier Woods, but was having some trouble putting Woods away. After Xavier escaped from the Bro Derek, Matt Riddle suddenly struck with an RKO. It did the job, and Matt Riddle had his hand raised. Matt Riddle loved performing the RKO so much, he used the move several times during the Money in the Bank ladder match. He even pounded the mat, just like Randy Orton would. The week after Matt Riddle wrestled Xavier Woods, it was Randy Orton's turn to take on the New Day member. Even though Randy Orton is a legend, Xavier Woods still proved to be a challenge for the Viper. Since it worked well for his tag team partner, Orton decided to borrow Matt Riddle's finisher. The Apex Predator surprised Xavier Woods with a bro Derek, which allowed Randy Orton to put his opponent away once and for all. After defeating John Morrison, Damian Priest would help reveal that The Miz had been faking his leg injury. This set up a match between Priest and the A-lister the next week. Before the match started, Sheamus, Damian Priest's SummerSlam opponent, came out to watch. Priest wasn't phased by the Celtic Warrior's appearance and decided to send a message. To end the match, Damian Priest stole Sheamus' finisher, the Bro Kick, and even mocked the Celtic Warrior by beating his chest. Their match at SummerSlam was phenomenal, but everyone knew this wasn't the end of Edge and Seth Rollins' rivalry. Several weeks after their first match, the Ray and our Superstar and the Monday Night Messiah fought again inside Madison Square Garden. As they say, sometimes you gotta fight fire with fire, and during the match, that's exactly what Edge did. After pulling Rollins off the rope, the Radar Superstar planted Seth with the pedigree. Luckily for Rollins, he was able to kick out and eventually won the match, but this rivalry still wasn't over. Edge and Seth had a third and final match inside Hell in a Cell. Their rivalry had gotten pretty heated and personal, and it only got worse during this fight. Rather than steal one of Edge's own moves, Rolf said steal one from Edge's best friend, Christian. The Monday Night Messiah twisted Edge's body around and hit the kill switch, laughing as he did it. Rollins should have soaked it in while he was on top, because Edge was going to get some sweet revenge. After a long and grueling battle, the Radar Superstar had enough. He placed his opponent on a steel chair and ended the match by defeating Seth Rollins with Rollins' own finisher, the Curb Stomp. Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins' Hell in a Cell match was absolutely brutal. Both men threw everything they had at each other, and even some stuff that wasn't theirs. Seth tried to hit the pedigree, but Cody reversed it and hit a pedigree of his own. Rollins made sure to get back at him later in the match. When Rhodes went for his finisher, Crossroads, Seth countered and used Cody's own move against him. That was cool, but it wasn't nearly as cool as what Edge did at Clash at the Castle. At the event, Edge and Rey Mysterio teamed up to fight Judgment Day, Damian Priest, and Finn Balor. The match had a lot of insane and awesome action, but the craziest part was near the end. Edge dropped Finn on the middle rope, setting Balor up perfectly for a 619 from the Rated R Superstar. That was amazing to see, but unfortunately it only got a 2 count. This isn't the only finisher Edge stole in 2022, as you'll soon see. If we're talking about stolen finishers, we need to bring up Logan Paul. The man is the master of borrowing WWE finishers. When the social media star was introduced as the Miz's tag team partner, Paul got into a fight with Rey and Dominic Mysterio. This led to Paul taking out Dom with the Mrs. Finisher, the Skull Crushing Finale. Ironically, about five months later, Logan would use the same move against the A-lister. At SummerSlam, the Miz and Paul fought each other one-on-one. -on -one. Both men pulled all the stops, which was made clear when Logan Paul got on the top rope and hit the Miz with a phenomenal forearm. That was pretty cool, but what was downright humiliating was what Logan Paul did at the end. After almost accidentally knocking on his wife, the Miz was caught by his former tag team partner and given a Skull Crushing Finale. Logan Paul beat the Miz, using 
using the A-lister's own finisher. Also, it's worth mentioning that in Logan Paul's first WWE match, he not only used Eddie Guerrero's Three Amigos, but also used Latino Heat's Frog Splash. Back to The Miz. Before he teamed up with Logan Paul, the most must-see WWE superstar teamed up with his wife, Maurice, to take on Edge and Beth Phoenix. The two couples fought each other at the Royal Rumble, where some finisher stealing occurred. In the climax of the match, Beth Phoenix borrowed her husband's finisher by spearing Maurice. Edge then hit The Miz with the Glam Slam, which shut down the moneymaker and got them the win. As soon as Matt Riddle started teaming with Randy Orton, the original bro started hitting the RKO whenever he could. Riddle continued to do so in 2022 and create some truly spectacular moments, like when he struck from out of nowhere and caught Montez Ford in midair. However, while Matt Riddle was still in the RKO, someone else stole his finisher, the bro Derek. At Clash of the Castle, Riddle faced Seth Rollins. During the match, Riddle caused his opponent in the triangle choke. Seth got out of it by stealing one of Matt Riddle's moves, the bro Derek. Luckily for the original bro, he was able to kick out, but he still ended up losing the match. Later that same night, we saw some more finisher thievery. Drew McIntyre faced Roman Reigns in one of the Scottish Warriors biggest matches of his career. Drew had to use everything he had to win, but so did Roman Reigns. The tribal chief stole his cousin's finisher when he planted McIntyre with the rock bottom. Unfortunately, Roman didn't hit the people's elbow. A little later, Reigns had the tables turned on him. As the two beasts were slugging it out, Drew McIntyre dodged a Superman punch and then countered with a spear. It was impressive, but it didn't get the win, and the Scottish warrior crumbled to the head of the table. At Backlash, Edge and Randy Orton faced off in the, quote, greatest wrestling match ever, but fitting with that label, the match did feature several of the greatest finishing moves. Randy Orton was the first to borrow someone else's finisher when he hit Edge with the angle slam. Oh, and an Olympic slam by Orton! Oh, wow. I don't know about you, but I thought that fit really well. Kurt Angle is one of the greatest wrestlers ever, so seeing his finisher in the match was a nice reference. A little later, Edge decided to do the same and borrowed a move from one of his best friends. Oh, thought about the power slam! Thought about the power slam! Oh, Whoa! Prettier! I'm prettier! Oh, After getting hit by the kill switch, Randy Orton responded by using a finisher from his former mentor's moveset. The Stable. smug look on Randy Orton's face. His mentor, Triple H's pedigree! Oh. A pedigree! Edge refused to stay down and bounced right back by nailing the Apex Predator with a rock bottom. Despite all the stolen finishers, it was ultimately Randy Orton's own punk kick that won the match. Way back at the start of 2020, Randy Orton was originally going to face AJ Styles at WrestleMania. So I will wait to WrestleMania and not only make you tap out, but retire you. On the January 6th episode of Raw, AJ Styles took on Akira Tozawa. During the match, AJ wanted to send a message to the Viper and decided to use Orton's signature DDT. To make it loud and clear, the Phenomenal One then ended the match with an RKO. With the Viper, oh, and no, AJ Styles with an RKO! The next week, both men were able to get their hands on each other in a triple threat match, also involving Drew McIntyre. To throw salt into the wound, AJ decided to hit Randy Orton with a rope hang DDT. Just like the week before, Styles is going to follow up with an RKO, but Orton countered and decided to use AJ's own finisher against him. Are you kidding me? No way! Orton Styles Clash! Unfortunately, it wasn't enough to get the pinfall, and McIntyre was ultimately the one who had his arm raised. Both Rey Mysterio and Seth Rollins threw a lot at each other when they faced off in their infamous eye for an eye match. After hitting the Monday Night Messiah with just about everything he had, Mysterio decided to borrow a move from Seth's playbook. Trying to cover his damaged eye, and Mysterio oh! when they stop! Unfortunately, the curb stomp wasn't enough, and Ray ended up losing the match. At Survivor Series, the Raw and SmackDown Tag Team Champions, the New Day and the Street Profits respectively, squared off to see which brand had the better tag team. The two sides had been fighting for well over 10 minutes, with neither one able to get the win, so Montez Ford decided to try a different tactic. Kofi went for trouble in paradise, Ford able to dunk it, oh my god, was that trouble in paradise? Hitting the trouble in paradise seemed to do the trick, as the Street Profits were ultimately able to pick up the win. Just one day after returning at the Royal Rumble, Edge was viciously attacked by Randy Orton. This put him back on the shelf, but after the Viper attacked Edge's wife, Beth Phoenix, the Radar Superstar was forced to come back. Orton tried to sneak attack his former tag team partner, but Edge wasn't having it. Edge with a concerto! Oh, wait a minute, an RKO! 
After hitting Randy Orton with his own finisher, MVP got involved, which proved to be a big mistake. Oh, the oh! 